Hey, we've previously explained that Windows 11 is a little more than a skin on Windows 10. However, that doesn't mean there aren't some big changes that actually make Windows 11 better than Windows 10. What it does mean is that there was no reason for those changes to only be in Windows 11. They could have just put them in Windows 10. So we're going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll start off with the bad. Now, this is what other people are saying is bad. We don't think it is. So let's explain what virtualization-based security is and why some people think it's bad, and then we'll get into the good things. So VBS is just a highly protected block of memory that's locked down by Hyper-V. And some people, specifically gamers, note that uh, gaming frame rates can drop up to 20% with VBS turned on. We haven't seen that, but that doesn't mean the reports aren't accurate. Now, you might see the word Hyper-V and think, you know, because you're not using any virtual machines, it shouldn't be on, except Windows 11 is using it itself. So let's show you quickly how to check if it's on, and we'll show you how to turn off the core function uh, if you don't want it on. So the easiest thing to do is click Start and just type in System Information, and scroll down and you'll see VBS, virtualization virtualization based security is running and here are the things it can do now if you want to turn it off there's a, a number of things to do but one of the easiest ways to turn off the memory protection is just to click start and type in core isolation and you'll get the windows 11 core isolation settings which is right here you can click learn more if you really care about it and it'll take you out to here okay enough said on that Let's get on with the good. So the good, foreground prioritization. So Microsoft has reworked their app priority so that their algorithm so that it strongly favors apps that are in the foreground or in an app that's starting up. They get more memory and CPU. Resume from sleep. This is kind of a big deal. Resume from sleep has been getting better and better and better and better and better. And it's now pretty much like your phone where it's, it's instant. And what Microsoft has done is prioritize which threads are important to come back first and how to turn on your SSD, your Wi-Fi, and your CPU when they've gone to sleep. And like I said, it's now almost instant. Uh, login speed with Windows Hello, same sort of thing. They've just reworked the code and now they say it's 20% faster for me. My face recognition is virtually instant. Direct storage, this is really neat. So direct storage came out of Microsoft's uh, velocity architecture from their Xbox gaming division. And what direct storage does is compress data that's sitting on your hard drive and then move it directly to the graphics chip. This provides two huge benefits. The first is because the data is compressed before it gets sent through the circuits on your board, it moves twice as fast. Secondly, because GPU RAM or VRAM is so much faster than regular RAM and the GPU decompression is faster than CPU decompression, it's way faster. Now, if you're thinking, geez, that sounds like hardware changes, you'll need some new hardware to make that work. You're correct. It means 99.999% of Windows 11 users today can talk about direct storage, but they won't have, won't have any impact on them. Same goes for the next thing, sampler feedback or SFS. This came from Velocity as well, the Velocity architecture as well. And it's a brilliant idea that says, hey, when something's in the background, say uh, mountains or something, you really don't need to load the entire texture file, you know, the, that shows the edges and the ridges. You just need to load parts of it. So instead of moving this massive texture file through the circuit board and having the GPU chew on it, why not just send parts of the file that the GPU actually cares about? It's a brilliant idea. And Microsoft says that the, that change alone can improve I.O. memory by about 250%. But again, you're going to need new hardware, so it's not going to make any difference to you or me. New driver model. That's eh, kind of neat. It's one of the uh, excuses Microsoft used for requiring 8th generation Intel CPUs or 2000 generation or newer uh, AMD Ryzen CPU. And that is DCH drivers. So DCH is a model for drivers that developers split into two. So there's a core function and there's customizations. So now developers, or Microsoft for that matter, I suppose, could change the core driver and not change what you see, or they could change what you see, but not change the core driver underneath. That makes the upgrade process a lot cleaner and it makes the system a lot more stable without uh, reboots. 
Windows Update Engine, uh, same kind of thing. This is kind of neat. The update engine inside of Windows has been changed so that, well, look, previously when you would connect your computer and ask it to check for updates, it would go to Microsoft and, or your corporate WSUS server or SCCM, whatever it is, and it would say, hey, what do you have for me? And it would negotiate and figure out what it already had and what it needed. And that makes lots of sense, right? So you don't download updates you've already got or ones that are expired. Well, Windows 11 has taken it one level further. It's now bit level. Well, sort of bit level. What they've done is instead of taking an entire package, they're only taking the parts of that package that you don't already have. So for instance, let's say you have a Windows 11 cumulative update and that cumulative update contains one driver and six registry entries which I know would be a very small update, but you get the idea. And your, but your machine, you already updated your machine and it already has the new driver. In which case, your Windows update's only gonna pull down those registry changes. And Microsoft says that that makes their updates about 40% smaller. They're also pushing intelligent active hours. And all it means is that they use an algorithm which they're spinning as AI to determine when you're around and when you're not. When you're not around, that's when it'll do the updates and the reboots in the background so you don't see it. That was available in Windows 10 as well. It just wasn't turned on by default. Windows 11 is turned on. Sleeping tabs in the browser. Okay, so Edge browser, I love it. That's pretty much all I use now. And if you don't know, Microsoft Edge is just Chrome with a bunch of customizations from Microsoft and a bunch of junk from Google ripped out. Sleeping tabs is a pretty cool feature. Let's just show it to you. Here's a browser that I've been running for a while. These tabs over here, you'll notice that they're darker when I mouse over them, put to sleep. And the logic here again is that it removes the resources that those tabs that you have not been using in a long time are consuming. Another thing they did is, uh, well, because the first thing most people do when they start up their computer other than launch Outlook if they're businessy, is to start the browser because, well, that's just where everything works these days. So Microsoft has added a feature to Microsoft Edge called Startup Boost. We'll show you where both of those are right now. So you just go to your ellipse in the corner, three dots, go to settings, Go to system and performance and you'll see here startup boost at the top and you'll see the inactive tabs i've got it set to one hour of inactivity let's change it to 30 minutes because one hour is actually a pretty long time close that now once again this setting is available in microsoft edge that runs on windows 10. so we have no idea why microsoft's pushing this as a windows 11 feature a little pro tip though is you can set it to group policy. UEFI. So if you don't know the difference between UEFI and BIOS, or you don't understand the difference between secure boot, measured boot, and trusted boot, we have some explanations that explain it. But it boils down to UEFI is faster and more secure. Being UEFI only is a big deal. The 10th item which Microsoft suggests, but I think it's pretty thin, is that Windows 11 is 64-bit only. There is no 32-bit version of Windows 11. And they claim that that allows them to focus more on uh, the core product, which I'm sure is true, but it's very minor because it's a compiler difference, not really a coding difference. But again, I get their point. So the ugly truth is that Windows 11 is just a skin on Windows 10. There are very few improvements in Windows 11 that aren't already available in Windows 10 today. For instance, the, the coolest thing about Windows 11 is that it's going to have Windows subsystem for Android. And that means you're going to be able to run Android apps right in Windows right out of the store. Pretty cool, except they've already announced that's going to be in Windows 10 as well. So whoop de doo for Windows 11. Windows 11 apps are 100% compatible with Windows 10. You, you can probably figure out why that is because it is Windows 10. And Microsoft's gone so far as to take their Windows 10 uh, group policy objects, the GPOs, and rename all of the categories from Windows 10 to Windows 10 and later, as in also Windows 11. Now, all that being said, we actually really like Windows 11 with two big exceptions. We hate that floating start button in the middle of the, uh, the middle of the taskbar at the bottom. We move it to the left. I'll show you how to do that. Right click task settings and then right here, taskbar behaviors, align it to the left. And the reason is I don't like things bouncing around. I want things in exactly the same place every time. Do not want things to be expanding and shrinking on me. And I've got to sit there and focus on it. The next thing we hate, and this is not too strong a word, is the combine function on the start bar. In Windows 10, it was built in and it was on by default, but you could turn it off. We need it turned off in Windows 11. And right now it's not there. It's one of the largest requests in the Windows Feedback Hub. 
and they still haven't done it. I'm not sure what their resistance is. All right, so to give this the Uber wrap, we found Windows 11. Sure, it's better and it's faster, but it's just Windows 10.1. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help.